Aside from the term phosphorus to describe the color of your night vision device, the term that probably gets me the most peeved is going to be generation. Without getting too much in the weeds of things, because I know there's probably going to be some European Discord guy wanting me to reference Albert Einstein's grandsons when it comes to talking about night vision devices, we're going to talk about what generation is and how it pertains to the performance of your night vision tubes, because nowadays the lines are a lot more blurred than you think they are. Hi everybody, Ryan here from Cold Harbor Supply and today we're going to be talking about night vision generations and specifically Photonis' new tube, the 4G high gain. Generation is mostly an American term used to define a very basic broad spectrum of performance categories for different night vision devices based on the times they were made. So starting with generation zero way back in the day, which is uh, an example is this big old Bushnell scope here, generation zero tubes and generation one tubes, they basically needed a ginormous IR lamp to illuminate the subject. So these don't really work too well unless you have a big IR light source and they're not really seriously considered for usage in the night vision world unless you're a collector or you really are trying to ball on as big of a budget as you can. Generation two is when things start to change because you had a huge increase in passive amplification, which basically means you don't need any form of IR light or illuminator or any form of LED to actually amplify the image, just the tube itself with the glass gets you a usable picture. So what they did was they put something called a micro channel plate inside the intensifier. What's generally known as some sort of hybrid multi-alkali or poly multi-alkali or poly hybrid alkali, depending on the brand you get it from. And they allowed the light to be intensified by a significant amount without any other sources. What generation three did was they changed some of the composition of the chemicals and some of the designs there to basically make the micro channel plate much more efficient in amplifying light. Now generation three tubes, the gallium arsenide in them, allowed them to intensify light in a bit narrower of a band at a much greater intensity. And also they are susceptible to something called positive ion poisoning, which basically means the tube is eventually going to degrade in a very short amount of time, usually under 100 hours. So the way that they designed this micro channel plate to combat the quick degradation was they've designed a little film on front of it made by, I believe, aluminum oxide. And this does block some of the electrons going in, so it's, you know, removing the total efficiency of the tube, but it allows it to last, most modern Gen 3 tubes last about 10,000 hours. The advantage of the Gen 2 Plus tubes is they have a broader spectral response. They're able to see a little bit more of the light spectrum than Gen 3 tubes. And something that was really interesting is when I went to the Photonis booth at SHOT Show this year, they actually showed some what were considered out-of-band lasers that Gen 3 tubes did not intensify very well, but as soon as they shone one in a room, the Gen 2 tube picked it up like a light bulb. It was pretty interesting to see. I've never really seen that before. And if you ever get the chance to go to their booth, highly recommend it. Another thing that Gen 2 tubes, and this is going to go on to another tangent later, is that they don't need a film in front of them because they don't suffer from that same ion poisoning that Gen 3 tubes do without the film. So technically Gen 2 tubes are filmless. And this is why I want to get into the terms why the generation thing to me doesn't really mean too much is because I could say that all my NNVT tubes and all my Photonis tubes are filmless tubes and that would not be lying but it would not exactly tell the whole truth either. And that's why I don't really enjoy the term generation, filmless, or even getting into things like phosphor colors because they don't actually determine the true performance of the tube. So now that the world's probably worst science lessons out of the way when it comes to night vision tubes, let's actually get into the Photonis 4G high gain tubes and what makes these actually so different that we want to compare these to some Gen 3 tubes. Photonis is a tube manufacturer based out of Europe. Most of you guys probably already know about them. They're one of the quote unquote big three in the night vision world, one being L3, the other being Elbit, and then the third representing us international guys is going to be Photonis. So why 4G high gain tubes instead of Elbit or L3 tubes? Well, first off, just to get the elephant out of the room, L3 and Elbit tubes are subject to some pretty strict export regulations. If you're not working in the professional field like mill, law enforcement, all that stuff, chances are it's gonna be pretty darn hard to get your hands on one of those tubes from most retailers. With these strict export regulations in play for us civilian night vision enjoyers out there and you know probably some of you mill and LE guys out there as well, Photonis tubes fill a really nice market cap by not being subject to the same export regulations as their American counterpart tubes. So what makes the Photonis 4G high gains different from the normal line of Photonis or even NNVT tubes that represents the traditional sphere of Gen 2 Plus tubes? And probably like the name implies, that difference is going to be the gain spec. For those who are newer to night vision, the gain spec basically dictates the sensitivity or how much 
the actual units can intensify the light in any given environment. So generally, the higher the gain spec, the better. The more gain a tube has, generally the better it can identify things in low light, especially when you're getting into very dark indoor environments, total cloud cover, and other really challenging environments for any night vision device. Now gain is measured in the night vision world with two different kinds of measurements. To simplify things, one's gonna be the American way of measuring things, and one's gonna be the rest of the world's way of measuring things. And you might notice the American tubes, usually most modern tubes are ranging around 50,000, 60, 70,000 gain. Whereas if you look at a photonist spec sheet, you're gonna see something around 10,000 or so. Basically what you do to convert the international values to the American values is you take that value and you multiply it by pi or 3.14. So normally, Gen 2 Plus ranges around 10,000. The Photonis 4G high gains are able to almost triple that. So this tube is reading at 27,076, which is a pretty insane value, especially if you multiply that by pi. And there you go, there's the US value. I'm gonna show it on the screen right now. So this gain value compares extremely favorably with most American tubes. And it also has other nice specs to boot, which we're gonna show later on in the video. Let's get into the testing parameters for these tubes. All of these devices are going to actually be using Carson Industries Fujinon lenses, so they're getting some of the best of the best, and those aren't gonna be a factor. We're gonna to try to keep the variables as similar as possible. The first device that we're gonna be testing is going to be this guy. This is an RPNVG pod on a little monocular adapter. Really cool setup. This is a pretty excellent Echo Plus tube, and this previously would have represented the best of our product line. The next tube is gonna be something a little bit interesting. We have this tube on loan from an LE department that we're working with. And in here is actually gonna be a Gen 3 Elbit tube. And this is gonna be our control for a Gen 3 tube. And finally, in this nice tan, Tanto, is going to be our Photonis 4G high gain tube. This one over here is gonna be an excellent representation of what these tubes can do. But is this gain value enough to make a difference for these tubes when compared to their Gen 3 counterparts? We're gonna find that out soon. First off is going to be the gain test where we put the nods in the Hoffman and we see what number the Hoffman spits out and this number is going to be how many times the source light in the Hoffman increases. So the higher the better. Our first tube is gonna be the Photonis Echo tube which is the most modestly spec out of the three and the gain spec is reading just around 4,000 or slightly under. The next tube that we're going to be testing is going to be the Photonis 4G high gain tube and this one is significantly higher than the standard echo tube reading at over 9000 gain which is over double the gain of the standard echo. And finally we have our Gen 3 Elba tube and this one full disclosure does read the highest out of the three. However, the Photonis tube has a higher luminance gain on its spec sheet, whereas this one has a slightly lower gain when converted to the same values. In our other testing results, you'll actually see that the Photonis 4G performs very similarly to the Gen 3 tube, so we're actually unsure how much of this gain makes a tangible difference in real life usage. If someone were to chime into the comments as to why this is different, uh, maybe the Photonis themselves can do that, which I know they do like to do, that would be awesome. But Full disclosure, the Elba tube does read the highest in terms of the pure system gain testing of the Hoffman. So if you watched my previous videos, you know what's coming next, and that's going to be the resolution test on the Hoffman. And this test is great because it allows us to see the pure performance of the tube, and we can control the light that the Hoffman lets in in a very fixed way, removing all outside variables. One thing to notice off the bat is the Elba tube appears to be a lot brighter, creating a more washed out image. Now, we had the option of changing the camera settings for this so that it would expose properly for these brighter parts, but we wanted to keep it the same to remove the camera settings as a variable for tube performance. The Elba tube does have a higher output brightness than the Photonis 4G tubes and the Photonis Echo tubes. Output brightness and sensitivity in terms of gain are two totally different things. You can think of this in a very common analogy by using your phone. Output brightness would be like the screen brightness on your phone versus sensitivity, which may be how well your phone's camera performs in low light environments. So just because you have a great camera doesn't mean that your screen brightness changes the image quality and vice versa. It's the same thing with night vision tubes. Having high output brightness can actually be a detriment in some cases because it removes you from having some bit of natural night vision in low light environments. So I actually enjoy the lower output brightness of Photonis devices more because I find it a little bit less harsh on the eyes when you're reaching low light environments. When we do start to reach the extreme low light levels on the Hoffman test, we can actually see that 
the output brightness neutralizes a bit on the Elbit tube versus the other tubes, and then we can see the pure low light performance of the Gen 3s versus the Gen 2 tubes in this case. So we can see that actually in very low light environments, the Photonis 4G high gains and Elbit 2 perform actually quite similarly, even with their slight disparity in specs, whereas the Photonis Echo in this point has totally fallen off in terms of properly identifying the individual line elements in the chart. And we can see this when we make the image black and white. We can actually see that the higher gain on the Photonis 4G tube does show a bit of a brighter image with strong contrast versus the Elba tube, although the Elba tube is slightly less noisy given its higher SNR spec. So the question I wanted to pose to our viewers is, is in this case, does generation actually matter when both tubes perform very, very similarly in these extreme low light environments? We finished up our testing in the labs and the results are quite interesting, but lab results are one thing, real life results are a total other thing. So let's get in the real world, put these on the camera, throw some nods on, and let's see what they would look like as if you guys were wearing them. Hey everybody, we are out here in a trail away from Toronto, so there's not going to be too much light pollution. In terms of our conditions around us, it's going to be pretty dark. There, however, is no canopy on the trees because we're in Ontario and we're just entering spring. So the leaves are just starting to come out. There's going to be some evergreens around us that will provide some coverage. And the sky looks like partially cloudy with just under a half moon today. Of course, these are not the super most challenging conditions for these nods, but they are a real life condition that most people can expect. And we're going to be displaying a bunch of other conditions to show you how these nods perform in a broad variety of scenarios. So for this test, what we're going to be doing is there's a pretty interesting scene behind us in terms of detail to resolve. There's a little bit of a bridge, there's a stairs, and there's lots of trees. And we're also going to see how it looks when people are walking on those structures. And we're going to be putting these up to our eye and testing these on our other camera rig over there. So let's turn off these lights and let's get to the test. In this case, I do believe that the Photonis 4G high gain represents a great mix of both worlds, providing the high gain of the Elba tube with the contrast of the echo tube. It's a great in-between, and I don't think you're actually compromising too much or at all on any of the high gain aspects of the Elba tube, and we will see this with future testing. As you can see, the darker areas of the image, such as the areas underneath the trees near the little footbridge in front and under the stairs, are illuminated very similarly between the Elbit tube and the 4G high gain tube. Although one thing that the 4G high gain tube does have over the Elbit tube is going to be that little bit nicer contrast, where I think the image really pops a bit more because you have a bit more of a differentiation between the lightest parts of the image and the darkest parts of the image, allowing you to have a bit more detection range and distinction between objects with different values of light. So in our indoor low light test, we are looking at how well they do in a very controlled environment. In this case, it's a fully enclosed warehouse room without any windows or lights on. And we put down two small marking glow sticks because contrary to popular belief, nods are not magic and they do need a little bit of light to actually have an image to intensify. Based on our testing, this is about the amount of light needed before the nods start needing supplemental illumination to see anything. And the lighting conditions are static in this case. We also rigged our monitor for our camera externally to the next door room on a very large display. That way we can check focus, make sure everything is good to go, and we won't have the display on the camera on to influence the results. And the results here speak for themselves. While the Photonis 4G high gains read a little bit lower on our Hoffman gain test, they actually seem to produce the brightest image in accordance with their higher luminance gain spec. So that's something to note. I am very curious where this discrepancy comes from, but it is something that we do notice. Another thing to note is that the Photonis 4G high gain is a little bit noisier, but that is to be expected as they do have a lower noise spec, a lower SNR than the Elbits, so they are going to be a bit more of a noisy image overall. The standard Photonis tubes in this case are completely blown away spec-wise compared to their higher gain counterparts, so let's focus on those. So in these low light conditions, I want to pose that question once again. Does generation matter for tubes, and which tube would you take when it comes to identifying subjects in extreme low light conditions? I will let the image talk for me. So this is our urban lighting test, and we're seeing how these tubes perform in mixed lighting environments with the focus on the rooftops of the buildings and the roads, and how well the tubes resolve images around photonic barriers. 
So why an urban test? Well, not everybody uses night vision in the darkest of dark conditions. A lot of law enforcement professionals and people that we have sold to use these in mixed lighting environments or areas where there is photonic barriers and opposing light sources, such as force on force training and urban or suburban use. So the photonist tubes have always been famous for their mixed lighting performance, having ultra fast auto gating, and they do drop a lot less resolution compared to their American counterparts. In this case, we can see that to be quite evident with the 4G high gain and the Photonis Echo 2s both performing very well in this case with great contrast so you can make out the details in the buildings and great preservation of resolution so the details are sharp. The Elba tube still produces a very usable image. The image is very bright. However, you will notice because of the lack of contrast and the fact the Elba tube has to drop more in resolution in comparison to Photonis, the details are a bit muddier and a bit less defined. In these mixed lighting environments, I strongly prefer the Photonis images, even the Echo image over the Elbit image, because of the contrast and the details rendered in these urban environments. The next thing I wanted to highlight was how resistant the tubes were to burn in. So as you can see here, the Elbit tubes do have a little bit of burning from that test and they were exposed for a shorter amount of time, whereas the Photonis tubes are not burned in at all and they were exposed for about a minute. So if urban usage is a consideration or you want to work around photonic barriers, the 4G tubes continue that photonist tradition of being extremely resilient to burn in from light sources. Now these temp burns will go away on the Elbit tube, but they just need to be black boxed or used for a bit. But for those of you considering that, this is the results. So let's get to the question. Is the 4G high gain tube going to be the one for you? And to answer that question, I got to obviously throw another question back at you is, do you want uncompromised night vision performance and are you willing to pay for it? The 4G high gain offers a pretty direct upgrade path from Echo, Echo Pluses, and of course, NNVT tubes, as well as providing all the benefits that those tubes have, such as resistance to light damage, great auto gating, great contrast, and all that fancy stuff. Compared to Gen 3 tubes, they're actually extremely comparable in performance. The Gen 3 tubes may be better in extreme low light conditions, offering a bit less noise of an image. However, when it comes to being an overall performer, being the best tube in most lighting conditions, I do think the 4G high gain tube is one of the best tubes in terms of its all around performance, doing well in high light, mid light, and low light scenarios as shown by our testing footage. For professional users out there, the 4G high gain is a pretty high value proposition. You guys are already usually paying for US Gen 3 tubes with your contracts, but the 4G high gain tubes might provide something a bit different, offering you similar levels of performance with additional benefits, such as being able to be put in any unit of your choice in our inventory, as well as the benefits of high light protection and greater operating conditions in different lighting environments. So if you are a law enforcement officer or you're a dude that works in a lot of urban areas or with a lot of force on force stuff, these do really well when exposed to light. So that may be a consideration for you, especially for vehicular work. So that's that everybody, 4G high gain. Pretty extensive tests. I know this one took a little while to come up, but we wanted to be thorough with our presentation of information and give you guys the best testing results that we can get. So let us know what you think, like, subscribe, all that YouTube-y stuff, and we'll see you on the next one.